Today I thought I'd talk about something somewhat ad-friendly, and that is Islam. Muslims. Capital punishment. Beating your wives, oppressing them because that is what you should do. Or, to give it its correct term, when you beat your wife. It's a blessing. At least it is according to Atika Latifa. And if I've butchered your name, it's okay, you're a woman. I'm a man, so it doesn't matter what you think. Now before we get into the article and accompanying video, it's a short video, so at least it's kind of a response video, but more focused on the article, which is from the Daily Mail, so of course you can ignore it if you want, but the video is interesting enough anyway, so you might stick around. Let's get something to eat. Alright Omegon, here's the deal. As you can see in the video, I made your sandwich. Now, let go of my pet llama, and don't ink it. The video is self-explanatory, you'll see what it's made out of, and I even left you a little bit of gold as a bribe. Oh, and for the AdSense revenue that you're not gonna get. Appreciate it. Enjoy your sandwich. Big thanks to LHE Nuggets. Channel link below. Please go subscribe. That sandwich was, well, the gold really made up for the heavy doses of yellow that I can't eat, you cunt. But I appreciate it nonetheless, and you can have your septic tampon one day. Now let's get into this article. Sick moment, Muslim teacher demonstrates how a man should beat women with a stick. As Islamic group says, a husband's violence towards his wife is a beautiful blessing. Naturally, there is context, and luckily we have the video where this is indeed spoken. I will of course play that clip in a moment. I do first want to point out, yes, this article is from the Daily Mail. I know that to the majority of my viewers, we don't hold the Daily Mail in any high regard or esteem. It is equivalent to any article from the Independent. It is trash less than trash, it's trash is trash. But the article accompanied with the video makes this rather interesting, and yes, the Daily Mail is sensationalizing aspects of it, I wouldn't go so far as to call what is said a sick, but it is interesting nonetheless, and it does mean that we can critique both the video and those that publish the article, i.e. the Daily Mail themselves. Now earlier I mentioned I would play a clip from the video that is relevant to the article itself. I will leave a link to the video below, but also, I'm going to play most of it in this video anyway, because it falls in line with what we're going to be talking about. Three measures are recommended. Mm -hmm. you know, advise them first, mm -hmm. leave them alone in bed, and hit them. Okay. Isn't it nice that, like acts of war, we have steps, diplomatic steps, we can take before we proceed with the act of violence itself? And if this doesn't work, and it does not bring the desired effect, then the third measure, which is permitted, I want to make this point very clear, that he is permitted. Yeah, it's not like people given the choice would strike another because they're not getting their own way. I mean, he's permitted to, but he won't do it. Of course he won't. Why would he do that? Because he didn't get what he wanted? That's a bit silly. I mean, he could keep on asking and asking, and she can keep saying no until he gets exhausted, but he doesn't have to hit her. No. No, never. Because that's not the kind of society we live in. Not obliged here, or not encouraged, but he's permitted to hit her. I like that you think that people need to be encouraged to hit another person when they're not getting their own way. So how do we understand You know, this? and, you know, subhanAllah, you know, that's what a beautiful, you know, the, uh, the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. That he said not to take all the steps, you know, at one time. Yeah. It is one after the other. What kind of hitting? Yeah, Hassan al-Basri said this means that it should not cause pain. There is nothing beautiful about taking diplomatic or supposedly diplomatic steps to achieve a goal that once they fail, enable someone to be permitted to act out something that is violent, but not cause harm or pain. That's not beautiful. And no drucking fool in their right mind would think it's beautiful. Atta said, I said to Ibn Abbas, what is the kind of hitting that is not harsh? He said, Hitting with a siwak and the like. A siwak? Yeah, actually, I got a siwak, you know, because I wanted to show that what siwak is. You know, it's a stick. It's a small stick. Is it me or does that look like a rather pathetic stick? You're not allowed to hurt your wife, but you are allowed, to, permitted, to hit her with it until she does as she's told or nothing. It's a bit of a cop-out, really. I was expecting, well, I was expecting something a bit longer. 
In this instance, I would have thought size matter, but then when you mentioned you're not allowed to actually cause pain, you have me wondering whether or not your god is giving you a blessing, or if he's a bit retarded. I'm not attacking Islam here, by the way. I just think the idea that you're given steps that are, as I earlier mentioned, diplomatic to an extent, and then one that isn't really diplomatic, but doesn't really serve any purpose other than to cause, what, repetitive annoyance to the wife? It's like being asked, are we there yet? 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 It gets annoying after two, maybe three, but I don't see anyone doing as you tell them because you keep saying it. Uh, you know, use for cleaning the tea. May I have the honour? Of course, go? yes. <laughs> if that pathetic little stick is used to clean teeth, does that mean I can take my Oral B electric toothbrush that will do undoubtedly a far better job and wrap the wrist of my future wife when she doesn't do as she's told? Or does it have to be this pathetic little stick that you use to clean your teeth less efficiently than I clean my own with an electric toothbrush? Yes, that's right. We English do in fact brush our teeth. And, you know, Shafi Jurist, he mm. said, a coiled scarf. You know, coiled scarf. It, that's another narration. And, you know, what kind of hitting is that with a coiled so, scarf? So we have, we have a piece of fabric here and to, it's, to yeah, demonstrate. It's, yeah, and in other narration, he said like a coiled or a folded handkerchief. You, I mean, it, it's, it's very evident that this is symbolic in nature. You're right. And the symbolic nature is quite clearly patriarchy. The man is the head of the house. The woman must do as she is told. Isn't that something feminists stand against? And as this is in Australia, a country that is quite feminist infested, I would have thought you'd know better. You as a country, that is. I know you're trying to be tolerant and understanding and kind towards those that are in fact Muslim, but at the same time, I would argue that a symbolic gesture that is physical violence is ridiculous. Ridiculous. So just before we go back to the article, and a few bits that piqued my interest, I want to pose a question. As someone that is still learning about Islam, so I'm ignorant to quite a few aspects of it, when the husband has exhausted his permitted steps, where does he go to get what he wants? Does he escalate this in some kind of court? A Sharia court, perhaps? Do they themselves then exercise a far greater punishment, or threaten such a thing? Or does divorce get brought up, should the object not do as she's told, of course? Muslim men are allowed to hit their wives if they disobey them, and domestic violence is a beautiful blessing, according to the women's branch of a radical Islamic group. Sydney primary school teacher Rima Lucia told the women's arm of hardline political group, yes, I cannot pronounce that, that men are permitted to hit women with sticks. I know that this has been covered somewhat in the video already, but I did want to touch on something I consider to be a form of hypocrisy. This group is a radical group, and is permitted to speak. They promote inequality and domestic violence. Even though the violence is pathetic, I mean seriously, that, that stick is rubbish. Now let's compare that with a film that highlights actual inequality and it gets blocked from being played for promoting bad ideas. After a group claiming to be all about equality, throw a hissy fit. Now what is the definition of a bad idea? And why is one idea okay to speak even though there is nothing equal about it and another blocked for highlighting gender inequality? Now I know there's a straw man in there somewhere. I just find it fascinating that violent ideas are given a platform because some coward is okay pretending it has something to do with tolerance by an intolerant faith and or culture. Also, isn't it odd that a country like Australia that promotes feminism all the time is okay with this when it, if anything, highlights genuine gender inequality? Now, just a quick point before we continue. I personally do not support nor condone no platforming or blocking events. If someone has an idea that others consider extreme, let them speak, as I think it is a great idea to challenge ourselves. During the 30 minutes discussion at a meeting in Sydney's West, Miss Alouche and fellow panellist Atika Latifa, who are both wearing headscarves, describe how beating women is a symbolic act. I'm not entirely sure why the headscarf was so important to mention, but I thought I would mention it as irrelevant. I've lost count the number of times I've heard people talk about how the headscarf is a choice. Yeah, such choice. That said, I am curious as to whether or not the Daily Mail wrote it in because of the hypocrisy of claiming to be free all the while being in relationships and being subservient to a man, and the headscarf is considered by some, quite a lot of people, to be a form of oppression and personal choice. Maybe it's that. It's a mystery. 
In a video of the debate, which has been posted on Facebook, Miss Lelouch says men should use the Sivak to punish their wives. She then uses one of the sticks to hit Miss Latifa while the pair laugh. Other permissible methods to punish women involve using twisted scarf or piece of fabric, the women say. I know and I understand that both these punishments are symbolic. I understand the reason, I understand there are steps, and I understand you are not allowed to physically harm your wife. But the very fact your God has granted you permission to strike another who is considered beneath you, even if it is with a terrible toothbrush and a pee-wee rat tail, is disgusting. If you're going to hit a wife with a stick or the rat tail, at least use the full-size versions, because you're going to get a lot more done with a quality rat tail. Those things leave marks when done right. I got a dead leg once. It was highly amusing. The women agree that they should only be beaten if they're caught committing sin, pointing out that this means seriously disrespecting Allah or their husbands. Disobedience to the husband, immoral acts or cheating, admitting anyone to the home that the husband doesn't like, Miss Latifa explains. Now I think we come to a point of interest. When you talk about seriously disrespecting Allah or your husband, I get the feeling the word seriously can be removed entirely. A word being used to reduce the impact of the entire scenario itself, i.e. being hit because husband got triggered and fake God got butt hurt. I know I've said it disrespectfully and I could have been far more super rational and super sceptical, but I don't believe in a God. So why should I entertain the idea that a god deserves any respect to begin with? Miss Alouche smiles as she adds, this does not mean a man can beat his wife simply for not cooking dinner, and the women agreeing that violence should only be used to promote tranquility. Do you think either of these women realise how terrible it sounds that by using violence to attain tranquility, there's no real tranquility at all? Because one of the people, i.e. the recipient of the pathetic displays of violence, lives in fear that she's going to be hit with a toothbrush or a peewee rat's tail. The pair agree that men have the right to beat their wives because husbands take a leadership position within the family. Hashtag gender roles. Hashtag patriarchy. Hashtag women are objects, not subjects. Now, the article finishes with reference to a man called Kisa Trad. Now, if I butchered the name, I do apologize. He was on an interview with some guy, and he said a few interesting things. And I thought we'd listen to that because he basically apologises for saying it, because he's progressive or pandering. I'll let you all decide. One of Australia's most prominent Muslim leaders has defended a verse in the Quran which says a husband can use violence against his wife, but should only use his fists as a last resort. I am so very excited to hear what the gentleman, his name I just can't be bothered to pronounce again, has to say. What that verse is, is uh, really putting a scenario is if you come home and you're really, really angry, and we've seen many men uh, uh, act violently towards their women, what this verse is saying, really... I have absolutely no idea what he has said so far. If anyone can translate that gibberish, let me know in the comments below. ...is uh, playing on the psychology of the man saying violence is a last resort. The first thing that you must do is counsel it. So what it does is a calming effect. Before you even consider using your hand, uh, before you consider any act of violence, uh, have you checked box number one, which is counselling? Have you checked box number two? Uh, uh, so uh, what does counselling entail? Well, maybe next time you should bring her a bunch of flowers. Maybe next time you should bring her a box of chocolates. Maybe next time you should take her... Yeah, and beat her. If she still won't see no, sense, beat her. That's no, what this is. Well, that, 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 beat them. I'm reading the Quran. The reason I've stopped it here is because there is an obvious confusion. Earlier the ladies mentioned using a sivak. This gentleman mentions using his hand. I also find it fascinating that he mentions that the best way to get to the point where your wife gives you what you want to prevent the violence is by buying her gifts like chocolates and flowers. Not at all sexist, really, is it? It sounds like, it sounds like somebody who's missed an anniversary and is trying to buy someone's affection. I understand what you're saying, but what I'm saying to you is you never, a good person would never get to that step because the first step would eliminate the problem. That when you sit down and talk about it, okay, I've become angry about something. I go to my wife and say, darling, I've done uh, I, what, okay. what happened. So she explains to me, so I'm sorry, I was wrong. I, I made the wrong assumption. So you never get to step number three. I think the guy doesn't quite understand the very fact that a violent resort exists is the problem. And in that final clip, I have absolutely no idea what he said past the point of the counselling should ideally solve the problem. It should never get past that point. <sighs> I should tackle Islam more often.
This is fun. Thank you all for listening.